Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. This is a closing market wrap for Wednesday, uh, May 29th, 2019. All right, this will be a brief update for members of the site. I, I just, the video that I just put out earlier, less than an hour ago, was done, started uh, a little after 3 o'clock. I wanted to get that one out to you guys before the close, and I also covered a lot of trade ideas. We'll streamline this one, only focus on the broad markets. Really just an update to uh, the analysis yesterday and what happened today. So what we have here, uh, again, and I mentioned this in the earlier video today, is part one, only part one, of a potential... Uh, bear trap, break of support, and what I'm referring to. I'll get to the daily charts here in a second. Uh, in the recent videos I outlined, you know, these are these are all support levels and resistance overhead. They're resistance levels, obviously, on price. Um, so what we had, we've been watching for last uh, week or so. We were dance, dancing on this 7282 support. That was around 280 or so on on spy, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, 178 on and on QQQ. I should clarify, guys. This is NQ if I don't make mention. It's up here in the corner. So these are the NASDAQ 100 E-mini futures. Let's tighten this up a little bit. And uh, what I said what I said was uh, certainly a possibility uh, since we had pretty strong divergences at the time that we could punch on down, break that support. Uh, and at that point, uh, it's not a completely over um, you know, for the for the bounce scenario, because what it would do is then clear out, probably suck in a lot of shorts, uh, which I have to imagine today is a pretty pretty well defined support level break, and also um, shake out some weak handed longs. Now, and this is the important part: there's two components to a bear trap or a you know failed breakdown scenario: the breakdown itself, obviously, and then the other part you have to have a reversal. Uh, I'll say this: that I'm still leaning towards a bounce scenario. You know, we're rallying to the end of this week. Um, somebody asked on the site, hey, are your convictions any, you know, different than yesterday? Yeah, I have to say, a little less. Even though this is a scenario I laid out that certainly I'm open to, certainly a possibility, this right here. This is what we dropped overnight and today, this move right here. Um, I'll tell you, what, what's going on is we're, we're going to, this market's going to need to giddy up in reverse and rally soon because what's happening today, I'm noticing a lot of key stocks out there. Costco's one of many. I'm looking at top components of SPY, QQQ. Uh, a lot of stocks continue to break down. We've had the markets roll over, quite a few sectors break down. So there are some cross currents. We've corrected quite a bit so far. We've fallen to support. Uh, there are many key stocks at and holding above support for now. You know, we have a couple of those active trades, uh, Intel, Apple, uh, still holding support right there. But uh, the, the easy way to put it is the market's still sitting perched in a very precarious position. And if it breaks these supports, we go lower. So, um, and if we don't rally by the end of this week, uh, this is what, uh, you know, is, is, is starting to really shape the charts. The weekly charts, which I'll get to in a second, are going to look even more bearish. I've been making the case they've been looking very bearish for a while, but there was technical setups, you know, divergences building the divergent high. Now we have all the reversals. Uh, we have the bearish candlesticks. Uh, the divergence will soon be confirmed or will be confirmed this week with a bearish PPO cross and less the market rally. So um, this is it. You know, we can go either way here. Um, and we'll just have to watch these levels. So I just want to point out. So we did fall almost to the button. There it is, that same 7180-ish level, um, you know, highlighted recently. Hit that today and held it. You can see as I zoom in tight, several 60-minute candles. But so far and into the close today, the markets are now closed. The bounce off there was very muted. So what they're doing is they're selling this market. They're just no buyers. Uh, any buyers and any longs and bulls in this market, they want out. Uh, they were trapped here, uh, chasing the the you know rally into the highs. And uh, you know we had a nice kickback rally here, and that did hit uh, my uppermost bounce targets at the time. And so we took the next leg down. Um, those were on SPY and QQQ. We'll get to those in a second. And maybe that's all it is. Maybe that's what we're going to get. But, you know, this may still prove to be a, you know, a simple ABC corrective wave down. There could, there could There's a lot of possibilities. I'm not going to get into Elliott wave counts right now into detail. But um, that's it. Some markets fell to support today. The support held. Um, we did break what I thought to be more important support, but as I said, as we go down from here, there's quite a bit of other supports below. I'll get to that in a second. The SPY hit the 200-day moving average exponential, or close to it today. QQQ has both the 200 SMA and EMA. Uh, those are the simple and exponential moving averages a little bit below. Those are pretty key levels that buyers usually step into, but 
remember what I've what I've said before when this whole thing even before it got going. I want to see the nature of this correction. How 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 are support levels treated? You know, did we did the buyers step in? Well, they certainly stepped in aggressively the first time at that 7282 level on ES, but it didn't last very long. We're back to it. it tested tested and then it broke. So what this is showing me right now sellers are in control they're just not the buyers are on the sidelines those are already long they want out they're selling into the bounces um hey that can change in a dime you know everything they were buying 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 right up to the top so you know the markets can uh quickly turn sentiment will change if we start to rally um you know they'll they'll come out of the woodwork telling you why you should have bought even if they're not telling you today but i just want to say this look it's uh, my convictions aren't very high and you know what I've been saying too is the bounce I'm really looking for you know set it back here from here to here it's it's really a matter of picking up nickels in front of a steamroller because as I said it's, it's, as we've gone down here the longer term charts have continued to firm up that bearish case and uh, so it's a matter of I'm just going to quantify it for you real quick that's about uh, my maximum bounce target on NQ, which we're looking at here, NASDAQ 100 futures, is about 6% to the upside. That's my max bounce target. Don't expect to get there and would actually, for the longer term bearish case, which still seems to me priced in the charts, that's why I favor it. Not that I wish ill on the market or, you know, want the stock market to drop. When it goes down, the economy will turn and go with it. People lose jobs. That's 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 not my thing. It's what what seems to me is priced into the charts now, and so therefore I'm going to trade that scenario. And um, uh, like I said, whether we get the next tradable bounce uh, now, uh, you know, this week or three weeks from now, we'll just have to assess it as it comes. So we'll leave it at that. Tell you that the markets, you know, the futures and the stock market closed at or a little bit above support today. Um, yes, they broke one support and now that becomes resistance. So the levels you want to watch overnight, if you're watching futures, uh, you know, today's lows pretty much that uh, 1780 support. And now remember resistance once broken becomes support. And that's a pretty important level now, especially because we danced on it for quite a while there, a lot of reactions. So that's about uh, 7283 or so on ES and then you can see the other levels and don't forget I'm sorry NQ I'm on started with NQ NASDAQ 100 futures and we still have the downtrend line from above so any rally it's gonna have to look like this it's gonna have to get through there first then get through the, you know the price resistance and the downtrend line but if it happens there's a, as much as from where we are now as much as a six percent upside I believe that's not to say that we can't go to new highs. Anything's possible. I'm not going to sit here and tell all possible scenarios because market can drop, you know, 10%. Well, I can't go down that much in one day, not without circuit breakers hitting, but it could it, it could do what it wants and it's going to do what it wants. But uh, like I said, the uh, price action is very weak, very, very weak lately. They're just not buying the bounces. So let's see what happens overnight. If they can lift the futures, all it takes is one, one tweet, as we all know, uh, to send things higher, uh, we haven't really had a lot of good news for the catalyst to you know trigger these you know the these 60 minute divergences and the bullish falling wedge on on uh, QQQ, um, but uh, it could come. So stay on your toes and uh, let's look at ES and a couple other things and we'll wrap this up. ES, that's the S&P 500 E-mini futures. That's what we're looking at here. Uh, you still have this, this downtrend line. We had this uh, descending megaphone type pattern. Here's the divergence that's been building up until. So what's changed today, uh, up until recently, we did not have divergence uh, until ES or the S&P 500 broke and made a new low today. That put in a, a lower low. So now, just like the NASDAQ 100 on the 60-minute time frame, we have those bullish divergences. So it does still set the stage for a rally if the markets can can turn around here, uh, confirm these divergences with you know the PPO turning back up here. But there's not a lot of room. If we have another big down day, here's the next support I have. If they break 27.70 on ES, uh, I don't see a whole lot of support up and down until about 27.29 here. Um, and uh, that could also take out the divergences. So uh, as I said back before it all even happened here, if we burn through these divergences like they're not even there and they don't result in at least a tradable bounce, 3, 4, 5 percent, uh, it just shows you there's uh, things are broken under the hood in the market right now. But uh, it's not over yet. Uh, let's let's see what happens tomorrow. But uh, like I said, today, you know, I'm not going to try to spin it as bullish because this is only part one 
of a potential bull trap. This is the breakdown I'm talking about and that I highlighted in yesterday's video. You know, to break down, to go in and put in, uh, extend those divergences, or at least put them in here in ES and extend them on, on QQQ and SPY and everything else. And uh, st uh, stage two uh, would be a reversal back, uh, especially a very impulsive break. You got to regain 2800, regain it with conviction, and really get above that trend line. And at that point, you should start a short covering rally if that happens. Um, anything's possible. So if you're going to trade it, you know, and you take that break out above there, or you took a, a, a pull back to this low today, uh, it's, it's easy. It's uh, it's all about, you know, calculating your risk versus reward. So if you're going long here, uh, expecting the markets to hold, and you're looking for a bounce up to, say, uh, this 2892 level, uh, you can quantify it and say, okay, let's say I'm going to use a 3 to 1 risk reward ratio, measure that up there, you know, how much is it? Uh, that's about a or you know, a little better than a 4% lift. So you can run a, about a 1% stop or so. That's going to you know, stop you out before that next support. But uh, uh, that's, that's what trading's all about. So you risk a dollar to make four. So, um, and uh, of course, if you want to layer in, that's another option to um, you know, take, add a, you know, take a position here, add if 24, 2800, 2804 is taken out and or that downtrend line and then you just move your stops up accordingly and, and let it run uh, or book profits at your preferred target uh, likewise if you're swinging for you know playing the long game here and as i've been saying for you know weeks now if you're trying to hit a triple or a grand slam uh, or home run that's that's the big move down that i'm talking about in that case um, you don't try to pick the nickels up in front of a steamroller. You don't try to jump out of your swing shorts for a three to five, six percent rally. Uh, you ride it out, and uh, maybe it doesn't happen, and that way uh, you're not shaken out of your position. Okay, in some of the recent videos, as well as the update I posted on the front page, uh, right side of the chart.com this morning, that that I believe that yeah, that's general market analysis. That should have been a um, you know free public uh, content post to come in and see this chart. Here's the levels uh, that I listed as support, and these are comparable to the support levels I was showing you on the futures. I've had, and again, I've covered these in recent weeks. Uh, different variations of the daily chart of QQQ, but I have support here, uh, pretty decent support, about 175.66. And you can see there's that 200-day exponential moving average. Uh, sometimes I'll, I'll use them both. I'll look at a 200-day simple and a 200-day. I prefer the exponential, but I know a lot of traders will put up SMA, simple moving averages, so you want to, some people watch those. Either way, that's a big level that buyers usually come in and, and, and they sell out on rallies up to, you can see right here, here's QQQ rallied up. Boom, hit the 200, reject it, hit the 200, reject it, hit it. Finally broke above it, so resistance once broken then become, yep, you got it, support. Boom, they bought the pull back to the 200. Uh, so now we're going to come down here. Um, now, if we blow by it like it's not even there and just keep going, that's that just tells you that things are broken in the market. And, um, you know, here's, here's my next support. I'll tell you right now about 170.82. But... Before we get there, we did hit, you know, and reverse and, and close above that 175.66 that I've been pointing out. Uh, and there's the wedge, what it looks like on a daily chart. There's the RSI divergence, no PPO divergence. Uh, make no mistake about it. There's no buy signals yet. Uh, it's just trying to, you know, if you're trying to catch a, a, a move off support, you know, scale in from here down to here. But if we go much lower, it's just not going to look good. As of now, there's your wedge pattern. So there's still the potential to reverse and, uh, you know, have a, a decent little rally here. But uh, like I said, the price action was just poor today. We had several opportunities to rally even late in the day. And we did. We closed off the lows but uh not not very far off there they you know a couple layer i'll show you what it looks like if you you can go to the one minute charts and this is what it looks like so here's our lows today you know gap down you know tried to get going a rally tried to get it going couldn't even take out the previous highs what i really want to see uh to firm up the case for rally is a pop back above backfill of today's gap and then some to get back above there and again it's the same levels i showed you on the on the uh, charts here. Let's see, that was our last QQQ trade. Um, here's a board. I have a board here somewhere. Many, many, many boards. There it is. That's that's what we're looking like on the 60 minutes. So there's, uh, you know, where we were yesterday. We closed right here. And there's that, you know, potential 
flush out move. It took us down below what I believe to be a pretty pretty significant support level there. Um, if they can run it up here, the bulls, the buyers, whatever you want to call them, and pop it, they're going to do two things. They'll pop, could break out above the bullish falling wedge. That in itself is a buy signal, but also regain that broken support level, which also would be bullish and, and, and indicate that probably quite a few shorts got trapped in here today that would then have to cover and maybe it's squeezed out and then go on to hit. And again, these are my bounce targets, my uppermost bounce target, which from where we're at now, or where we closed, again, about 6% upside. And at this point, let's just say my preferred bounce target is up here, right here. And if we don't bounce, I will not be surprised at all. Um, still leaning that way, a little yet less than yesterday. Uh, I would have, you know, had my convictions a little higher, had that bear trap scenario materialize in the same day with a breakdown like that, and then a strong green close today. Uh, you know, rally back up with a green close. We did anything but. We closed down 0.82% on QQQ. So, uh, like I said, it's not over yet. Um, but uh, uh, to be continued tomorrow, I guess that's the easiest way to say it. Uh, SPY, same story. Here it is, 60-minute uh, chart. There's your bullish divergence down. There's your breakdown. Uh, there's your trend line and potential bounce targets with an uppermost bounce target uh, up there about uh, 280, uh, 289. So that would give SPY, if it happens, a bounce of only about 4%. Remember, you get more bang for your buck in QQQ. Uh, and that's also what I'm watching and, and hanging in there. So there's quite a few, you know, we have active official trades out on Apple and Intel, both of them holding above support. Uh, they're not really, you know, failure to launch so far, but they haven't given those support levels up. So therefore, still still a chance that uh, we could get a rally here soon if the buyers step in and, and uh, you know, especially if they come into those uh, FANG stocks, the big tech stocks, that, that should certainly give the market a lift. Okay, and as I said, uh, this, these are the weekly charts. This is the bigger picture stuff. This is stuff that takes many months, sometimes years to form, the developments that I'll watch, you know, and I'm, this is one of them right here. We had, a, you know, let's add the other one here. We had, you know, a divergent high back at the highs in uh, October, led to the first, it led to what was, to me, probably the single most significant event in the entire, well, it was, in the entire bull market. This this trend line that I have here goes all the way back to March of 09. That was our bull market uptrend line. It was broken, back tested back then. So that that told me with a pretty you know decent chance the bull market has, has likely ended. And then we came in and had a back test and a failed, you know, attempt at the breakout to the new highs. I think they may have cheered it on uh, Bubble TV, but for all intents and purposes, if you look closely, that was simply a double te test of the previous highs. I'll put the crosshairs there and um, you know, almost a perfect rejection at that previous high right there. So, you know, if you're talking a few you know, basis points on a, you know, on a $280 security or the index itself, the S&P 500. Again, that's a, that's a double top failure, but more importantly, also a back test or as importantly, a back test and an impulsive rejection, not just a back test of a trend line. As I say, that's back test of a trend line. Uh, they do provide objective shorting ops, but they're not necessarily sell signals because you can continue to back test. What what you look for are reject impulsive rejections. And so far, these are weekly candlesticks: one, two, three, four, four consecutive red candles. You don't see that often, especially during an uptrend. Here, uh, you see those at after you know market tops and things like that. So, like I said, the uh, today certainly didn't help. Uh, it, it firmed up this bearish case a little bit more, but you can see right here the S S and P 500 or SPY at least um, that candle. The bottom of that candle is right on that 40-week exponential moving average. That's the same as your 200-day moving average. So again, you're gonna probably see some buyers step in, but you know, guys, these are these are cross currents. You know, I can sit here and say, well, there's some a level where the buyers should step in, but that's that's the nature, the nature of a, of a bear market or a big correction, if that's what we're in right now uh, with a, a more downside to come, is that support levels where dip buyers should be stepping in to buy or are stepping in to buy don't hold. You know, in a bull market, it's easy. Pullbacks to support, buy pullbacks to support, buy the dips, and you're rewarded. Um, but in bear markets, it's the opposite. You know, this, instead of buy the dips, you need to change gears and to short the rips and sell bounce backs into resistance. Now, it's a little too early. I can't say. You know, we're, we're, we're still just barely off the highs. If you, you know, this, this, 
bull market's measured in hundreds of percent uh, return and we're only about six percent on the spy maybe eight percent or so or a little more on on qqq so right now it's really uh you know especially when i look at the daily chart nothing more than just a correction after especially after a strong rally and overdue correction but again it's these weekly charts that i'm that's where my focus lies and the more we go down things like this here's your ppo it has now made a bearish crossover the week is not over so if we can rally now into friday like i said yesterday maybe maybe they delay it here you can see the ppo was whippy here there were a couple times where it looked like it was going to cross down uh, this isn't a great example the separation is not clean on spy but here let's look at qqq for you um there's QQQ. There's your divergent high one breakdown back or a new high, but a failed breakout to new highs in QQQ. And again, all red candles so far. PPO's crossing down, but here here's an example right here. Look like you're going to get a bearish cross on the PPO. They were heading down, boom, but they flattened out. Then you got a bearish cross here, cross down below, but you came back up. So sometimes you get some whippy signals. But um, and another thing I always say when using the indicators like a PPO, uh, I like clean separation from the lines. When you're trending and there's no volatility like this, whether it's well, you usually don't see a downtrend like that, not in the markets. Stocks are usually much more volatile on the way down. But when you do see that, don't try to use crossovers on moving average pairs or PPOs. They're not going to work. You're going to get whipsawed to death. I like what I call clean separation. And that's what that's what you had here when you have big difference between the lines. That's a clean, what I call a clean uh, bullish PPO crossover right here. Uh, it occurred uh, earlier this year. And this is a clean bearish crossover with a big separation, the lines coming down. Um, but only in hindsight we'll be able to tell if you know this, this sticks or we kiss and then and, and, you know, get that crossover a little bit later. So again, it's a weekly chart. Um, Friday, if they, you know, if we have a big dump into the close at the end of this week, we may have a clean crossover, and that will confirm that divergent high. That's where that's where I was going with that, and uh, you know, so there's there's the uh, downside targets. Um, that's the lows right there. I imagine that's where most people are looking at, but uh, yeah, I still maintain that. Uh, that's probably our well before all is said and done uh if 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 these charts continue to firm up that's that's the drop that's the target I'm looking at down there somewhere around the uh highs from twenty fifteen or so okay, let's wrap it up here, but uh before we do back to the daily charts, you know I haven't talked about this in recent videos, but you know you you probably see the lines on the charts, and I've talked about them you know on the way up that uh you know. We're going to get a decent correction after this, you know, insane rally off the lows there. And, um, you know, I still maintain, uh, again, zigs and zags aside. I'm just an active trader, so I'll try to try to game the zigs. But zigs and zags aside, I still think this is a minimum target, pullback target for uh, the SPY. And then I have color-coded these levels if and when we get there. Again, it's, you know, we have a way to go before we get there. I don't expect it to happen tomorrow or even next week, but it is possible because, again, as I always say, stocks tend to fall a lot faster than they rise. So you have to have your ducks in a row. Um, so if we get down there, these are the levels, and again, they're color-coded by levels of importance where uh, they're, they're key support levels that if we happen to get there, uh, they should hold. So let's say minimum target. We get much more than that. It starts to get ugly, but we can hold that support. If that breaks, that one breaks. This is where we get waterfall selling, if, if especially if the red line breaks. And I have comparable levels on QQQ, so uh, they're they're down here. I turned the colors down a little bit. So right now, let's just focus on this. I still still lean towards a bounce, and you know, if we get a bounce, then we'll look to uh, you know add back some short exposure, some new short trades on the site, cover the longs that we have now, and um, if not going to you know if we go much lower tomorrow those uh you know the few longs that we do have uh will will most likely be stopped out well i should clarify most of the longs we have on the site right now are actually cranking we have you know wheat which has been doing great uh coffee jo uh, wheat etn um uh well treasuries that we just closed oh that was an unofficial trade and now i well, won't get into that too much because we now have an active trade on uh new trade on uh, tlt but uh, going the other direction so again uh, i'll follow up with that tomorrow for members uh but that's a, a new official trade idea and um what else is there so basically commodities and, and other things out there that uh don't 
aren't very correlated with the market. That's what, uh, you know, I do these public videos. We focus on just the broad markets. But if 100% of your portfolio is in the stock market, whether you're an active trader or an investor, you're not diversified. You know, SPY, yes, the S&P 500 has 500 stocks. But guess what? When the market drops, just about everything, especially all things that are indexed, like, you know, index funds that track QQQ, small caps, mid caps, large caps, it doesn't matter. The U.S. markets fall. Uh, just about all stocks are going to fall with it. So, um, you know, the you know, key to investing or trading is diversification. And so, therefore, look at other things like ag commodities, bonds, uh, gold when the time is right, and uh, other things like that. Let's go ahead and wrap it up here. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Hope you enjoyed it.